top 10 places to visit in the UK. The United Kingdom, aka Britain, aka England, aka the place that has the English Premier League, and so many other names. The UK is one of the most famous countries in the world. For a lot of people, it is not just a country. It's a land of wonder, esteem, history, royalty, and tea. British people really love tea. In fact, the British drink an average of 165 million cups per year. Outside that, the UK is also home to some of the most amazing locations on the planet. So, as your trusted travel guide, We Traveling is going to present you the top 10 places you absolutely have to visit in the UK. We're going to be checking out historical sites and structures, alpine ranges, sporting locations, castles and palaces, and some of the most popular cities on the planet, the homes of kings and queens. I don't know how we can possibly fit all that into one video, but here goes nothing. Liverpool I thought I'd start with an iconic city, famous for a lot of things like the outstanding Liverpool Football Club, who are the proud owners of the biggest stadium in the country. They also have some great museums and the riveting Royal Albert Dock. But Liverpool is more than just sports and docks. There are a lot of things that make Liverpool special. It is a key financial center in the country, a metropolis for trading as well as a huge site for the Catholic and Anglican churches. But if you're not concerned about that, then you can go and see all its glorious locations like Pierhead, St. George's Hall, the Merseyside Maritime Museum, or the Museum of Liverpool. You can even visit the Tate Gallery, the Victoria Gallery, and the Walker Art Gallery. Honestly, there are too many to name. Okay, I've just received word that I have to talk about the Beatles. As you know, the original Fantastic Four originated from Liverpool. And there are so many monuments dedicated to them in the city. So be sure to check out places like Cavern Club and Albert Dock where you can listen to the stories of the Beatles. Loch Ness and Inverness I'm sure you've heard of the Loch Ness Monster. You know, the mythical creature that's set to roam a certain area in Scotland. Well, I don't know if the monster is real, but I know that Loch Ness is. It's a real place to be. Nestled in the heart of Scotland, Loch Ness is a lake town near the city of Inverness. It has some of the best scenery in the country, as it is home to the historic ruins of Urquhart Castle, a fortification that dates back to the 14th century. There's also the Loch Ness Center Exhibition, a place where you can learn about Loch Ness's rich history and wartime stories. There's also the city of Inverness, a vibrant place that has some great attractions like the Inverness Castle and the Inverness Museum. The Cotswolds The Cotswolds are probably one of the most photographed regions in all of Britain. Due to its distinct look and naturalistic vibe, it's arguably the most beautiful place in the UK. The Cotswolds are the pristine countryside in southeastern England, stretching across 1,287 kilometers. And within that area of land are six of the best counties in the country, including Wiltshire, Oxfordshire, Gloucestershire, Worcestershire, Somerset, and Warwickshire. All great locations with amazing attractions. But that's not all Cotswold has to offer. Cotswold, despite its grandeur, is home to the more rural folks of England. And in there are some great villages with the weirdest of names such as Borton on the Water, a waterside village that looks a lot like Venice. Cotswold is beaming with places with immense beauty, so you can visit to check out the landscape, do some horseback riding on the Cotswold Way, and just enjoy the serene location. Cardiff Welcome to the capital of Wales. Wales might not be as big as England or Scotland, but it is still a healthy contender in terms of attractions. Sure, the scenery in Wales is great and all, but you haven't really enjoyed Wales until you've been to its capital city, Cardiff. There are so many great things to see, like the murals in the Banqueting Hall or the Clock Towers and, of course, the Cardiff Castle. There's also Cardiff Bay, home to some amazing restaurants and art galleries. There's also the world of boats, which is like a very huge collection of boats, old and new, from all over the world. There are just so many things to do in Cardiff. Lake District I have six words for you. Go and see the Lake District. Preferably with a loved one or romantic companion. Point proven, case closed, moving on. 
I mean, not only is it considered to be the most magical place in the UK, but it's also a celebrated hub for romance in the country. It has cascading hills and panoramic intimations all over the world. With places like Grasmere and Scaffold Pike to visit, you're sure to have a jolly good time. What's most important to note about the Lake District is the fact that it is closely attributed to Beatrix Potter. No, she is not related to Harry Potter, if that's what you're thinking. She is a famous writer and conservationist known for writing books like Peter Rabbit. Beatrix lived and was heavily involved in the Lake District. She was big on conservation, and thanks to her efforts, places like the Lake District National Park are still around, and now you can take walks and hikes in those beautiful ranges. You can also visit her home at Hilltop and learn more about her life and the history of the Lake District. Medieval City of York You've heard of New York, but have you heard of the medieval city of York? You know, the original York? This city was founded by the Romans, who built walls around the entire city. York is famous for being the ecclesiastical capital for the Church of England, as well as owning the largest medieval church in the country, known as the York Minster. It's an important piece of architecture as well as the historical structure that hallmarks certain key moments in Christian history. But other than the Minster, York still has some many other great places like Clifford's Tower, York Castle Museum, the Shambles, Castle Howard, and even the Jorvik Viking Center. All great locations for sightseeing and exploring. There's also the National Railway Museum, which houses one of the biggest collections of railway antiques in Europe. Again, there are so many exciting locations in York, which you could spend days, weeks even, and not run out of things to do. University of Cambridge and Oxford We are now entering the more prestigious locations in the UK. I'm sure you can agree that at the height of education in the globe, Oxford and Cambridge are among the high-ranking schools. But other than being centers for learning, Oxford and Cambridge and their respective towns are also tourist centers. In Cambridge, you can visit great historic buildings and its 31 colleges, some of which have been around since 1284. You can take a boat ride on the Cam River and you can visit the Old Town. Depending on the time you visit Cambridge, you can be part of the fantastic festivals that are held in the school, like the Cambridge Folk Festival and the World Class Film Festival. There are also places like the St. Mary's Church and the Round Church, or St. Mary's the Less and its iconic stained glass windows. Oxford, on the other hand, has a much more intricate and complex architecture that are equally appealing and satisfying to see as in Cambridge. You can visit the Carfax Tower, High Street, chapels, student accommodations, and the Oxford city centers. And if you're feeling particularly inquisitive, there are also places like Radcliffe Square and Bodleian Library. All great locations and all of them are worth visiting. Stonehenge you can't visit the UK and not at least attempt to visit Stonehenge. This place needs no introduction, it's the world's oldest heritage site, and people have journeyed to see Stonehenge for thousands of years. The funny thing is no one really knows what it was built for. Everyone believes that it was meant to be a worship site, or just a historic work of art, or even both. Whatever it is, it's worth seeing. Just the sheer age and intricate construction dating back to a time when man was just learning the use of crude implements. Stonehenge is a huge part of Britain's culture, a testament to man's ingenuity and a very exclusive place to visit. There is a bit of a waiting time when it comes to visiting Stonehenge, as it's crowded with tourists every year. You can also visit the nearby town of Salisbury, a prominent medieval town that boasts of historic attractions. So, you can check out both places on your visit to the UK. Edinburgh Well, we've arrived at the capital of Scotland. Edinburgh is easily one of the most beautiful cities in the country. The city is flushed with historic sites and architecture, yet it's progressive in all sorts of ways. It's one of those places where you don't need to take a bus or vehicle, just take a walk and admire. With fine attractions like Edinburgh Castle, the Stones of Destiny, and the Scottish National War Memorial, you can visit the Old Town and New Town sections of the city. There's the Royal Mile, the Palace of Holyrood House, take a hiking trip to Arthur Street, or you can check out the Royal Yacht Britannia. There are just too many fine locations, and I can't possibly exhaust the names in this video. And that's what makes Edinburgh one of the greatest cities in Edinburgh, 
And it would be number one if it wasn't superseded by what's arguably the number one city in the world. London. Well, you guessed it. There is no other place it could be. It's the capital of capitals, the home of the British royalty and its King's Guard. What's funny is London is actually the smallest city in England. Yet it's the most popular and it's no mystery why. London is an all-in-one package. It's England at its finest. The best of the best with so many great places that it would take me hours to get through them all. But just to give you a sense of what you're going to find in London, here are some top contenders. There is Buckingham Palace, the home of the British royal family. There you find the King's Guards who never move, although I wouldn't recommend going too close because they're permitted a reaction in some certain situations. There's also Whitehall Road, where you have places like the British Parliament and Big Ben, not forgetting Westminster Abbey, the site that has hosted so many royal weddings. There's the Natural History Museum, Trafalgar Square, the Tower Bridge, the River Thames, and the Tower of London. You can't plan a trip to the UK and not at least check out some of these great places. Sadly, we've come to the end of our list, and honestly, we haven't even scratched the surface of great places you can visit in the UK. Let me know if you would like to see a part 2 in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and see you next Sunday.